slob on my knob, like corn on the cob. Jordan Peterson is known for being a staunch defender of free speech, that people should be able to say offensive things, not just with the safety of not facing legal repercussions, but also from ostracization and banning from private social media platforms. He recently announced that he's working on the launch of his own platform, oriented around free speech and anti-censorship, known as ThinkSpot. Whether this results in a site that's not a cesspool like Gab or 4chan remains to be seen. So outwardly, he presents a pretty pro-free speech stance, but does he stand by them himself? Well, let's have a look. Hint, he does not. Alright, Exhibit A. Hitchens and Dawkins should be oppressed. Peterson, as most of you probably know, is a pretty religious guy. A Christian. Well, here's him talking about the popularity of atheists like Hitchens and Dawkins back in 2011. Richard Dawkins' book came out about three to four years ago. Yeah, so and, I'd like, and, and it's got a perfectly fine, a per perfectly fine reception. I mean, and, and there's no evidence that he's being oppressed, even though maybe he should be. I don't think I use the word oppressed. I don't know, man. Doesn't sound like free speech to me. Okay, maybe I'm being a bit unfair here, right? It was just one offhanded comment from a long time ago. Maybe he didn't even really mean it. Okay, yeah, I could see that. Although it is still a bit of a strange thing to say. But hey, don't worry. There's plenty more to come. Exhibit B, Silencing Critics. An author named Kate Mann had an interview with Vox where she suggested that parts of Peterson's book was sexist, misogynistic, and authoritarian. Peterson then had his lawyers contact Vox, demanding the publication to take down Mann's statements and apologize, or face legal consequences. Vox basically laughed it off as baseless, and nothing happened. That article is still up, and the statements haven't been retracted. Even though nothing came of this particular instance, it does suggest a proclivity for Peterson to threaten legal action against people who say things that he does not like. And he has actually gone a step further. He launched two defamation lawsuits against Wilfrid Laurier University. Here's a very quick rundown of what happened. A teaching assistant at the university showed a video of Peterson in a class. She was then severely reprimanded by teaching staff in a private meeting behind closed doors. One of the supervisors suggested that she created a toxic environment and that playing a clip of Peterson was equivalent to neutrally playing a speech by Hitler. Maybe a bit of a hyperbolic stretch there. The teaching assistant recorded this exchange, unbeknownst to the others, and then released it publicly. She subsequently sues the university, as does Peterson, with Peterson noting that he hoped it would convince professors to be much more circumspect in their actions and their words. Sounds awfully like you're trying to censor speech, because they called you names you didn't like behind closed doors. Have you maybe tried not being so sensitive? He's being sensitive to offence such a problem that like, we would have previously called that manners. It's a terrible problem. And you shut down people who don't agree with you because why should you let them talk? All right, let's go to exhibit C. Meet and hobnob with a genuinely authoritarian, tyrannical, illiberal leader. Agree with him on a bunch of stuff and then leave it at that. So JP met with Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban. Someone who has been roundly condemned for his authoritarian leanings, suppression of free press, and for the erosion of democracy. So he met with JP and they talked about how political correctness is a bit shite. Wow. You'd think they'd talk about a bit more than that, considering JP's hate for tyrants and how much he claims to value free speech and that he's a classic British liberal. Politically, I'm a classic British liberal. Temperamentally, I'm high in openness, which tilts me to the left, although I am also conscientious, which tilts me to the right. What? Did he just suggest a causal link between personality traits and political ideology? I mean, I know there's some evidence for a correlation between the two, but being high in conscientiousness doesn't tilt you to the right any more than liking red hats does. I don't know, it feels weird to me questioning a, a respected psychologist like this, but it feels like an oversight on his part. Okay, back to Orban stuff. What am I saying with all of this? I'm clearly engaging with the guilt by association fallacy here. He didn't explicitly endorse that person. Well, actually, I'm not really saying that Peterson is necessarily an authoritarian just because he hung out with one. What I'm saying is it's weird that he didn't come out and, and clarify anything about the meeting, even though the Hungarian press made it seem as though Peterson was implicitly endorsing Orban. They certainly didn't note of any disagreements between the two. So I guess he's perfectly fine being used as a propaganda tool for the Orban regime. And Peterson seems to have just passively stood by and let it slide. It's a bit odd is what I'm saying, and it makes me wonder about whether or not he really cares about freedom and speech as much as he claims to, while being fine with the fact that he seemingly got on with a tyrant who constantly undermines the very values that he supposedly advocates for. Free speech is the mechanism by which we keep our society functioning. Woo! All right, let's move on from boring free speech stuff. Let's get some spicier memes in here. Dick sucking in the workplace. 
you know, because women have access to the birth control pill now and can compete in the same domains as men, roughly speaking, there is a real practical problem here. It's partly an economic problem now, because when I was roughly your age, it was still possible for a one-income family to exist. Well, you know that wages have been flat, except in the upper 1% since 1973. Why? Well, it's easy. What happens when you double the labor force? What happens? You have the value of labor. Okay, that's economist Jordan Peterson there for you folks. He solved it boys, that's it, we, we gotta cut some of the labor force. And you know, because I have a certain kind of predisposition, I'll just conveniently take that to mean that uh, women should probably stop working. Get them out of my jobs, go make some babies. Now for clarity, I'm not an economist, I'm not an economics expert, but even to a layman like me, that sounded unbelievably stupid. He's making a massive assumption that there's only a fixed amount of work to go around. This is commonly known as the lump of labor fallacy. I'm sure there's a complicated nuanced answer as to why real wages have been stagnant for so long. Just saying that an increase in the labor force inherently means a decrease in wages is hilariously simple minded. There's a decent thread on r slash bad economics that talk about this particular clip of Peterson and a lot of them point out why they feel it's laughably wrong. Alright, let's see what else he says about women and work because of course we are in the Me Too era right now. There's a lot of discussion surrounding that. Let's see his takes on it. Here's a rule. Don't, don't How about no makeup in the workplace? Uh, Isn't that sexually provocative? No. It's not? No. Well, what is it then? What's the purpose of makeup? Why, why do you make your lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal. That's why. Why do you put rouge on your cheeks? Same reason. I mean, look. How about high heels? What, what, are they what about high heels? What about them? They're there to exaggerate sexual attractiveness. That's what high heels do. Now, I'm not saying that people shouldn't use sexual displays in the workplace. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that that is what they're doing. And that is what they're doing. If, if, do you feel like a serious woman who does not want sexual harassment in the workplace, do you feel like if she wears makeup in the workplace, that she is somewhat being critical? Yeah. Okay. I do think that. Yeah, you know that secretary that works in your office who's been happily married for over 10 years? You know, she claims to wear makeup to look professional and lively, but nah, she's actually signaling that she wants someone to fuck her. Okay, I'll actually address my thoughts on this seriously. There is a certain professional standard centered around grooming that has been set at this point. And if you might actually talk to a few women, some of them might tell you that when they don't wear makeup, others think that they look tired or sick or treat them as though they are unprofessional and basically less competent. And this is not just their feelings on the matter, this is supported by research. Makeup has become part of a sort of corporate professional uniform. Women are generally worse off in their career prospects if they don't wear it. And even if none of that were true, I don't think seeing someone with makeup or heels is such a crazy distracting thing. As though normal well-adjusted dudes with a decent culture around them can't learn to work with someone who wears lipstick without getting a stiffy or soliciting sexual favors. Here's a question. Why do you think JP wears a nice suit? or uses hair gel to slick his hair back? Or why did he get a hair transplant? Clearly, it was a part of his sexual signaling to exaggerate a youthful, fertile appearance or to give off the impression of broad shoulders and a wide wingspan in order to appear more masculine and dominant. This man's trying to lay some pipe. Ah, but surely it can't be about matching professional standards that society has set or even about feeling good within his own skin. No, that's crazy talk. Now all jokes aside, I don't think it's that insane to say that people wanting to sexualize themselves or wear certain kind of clothing or flaunt off their physical attributes doesn't mean that they invite harassment. Like these things aren't mutually exclusive. Maybe instead of focusing on the clothing or makeup, there's a broader cultural issue that can be worked out over time. As you all probably know, some of the countries with the most stringent dress codes have massive issues with sexual harassment and sexual violence. It's not like the more you cover up or the more you segregate segregate the roles of women and men, that suddenly they'd start treating each other better, there, there isn't like that one-to-one -one relationship there. Again, this is Jordan taking his dogmatic, simplistic view and then coming out with some ill-thought-out drivel. Just because he wants us all to go back to a society where certain groups of people have very set specific roles. Oh, I'm sorry, he would never actually say that he wants that. Not explicitly anyway, he's too much of a coward to do so. But everything he says, says that he wants that. Here's a question. Can men and women work together in the workplace? Yes, I, how I do, you do it. How do you know? Because I work with a, a lot of women. Right. Well, it's been happening for what, 40 years? 
and, and things are deteriorating very rapidly at the moment in terms of the relationships between men and women. Also, anyone who wants to claim that I've taken any of this out of context or that I've mischaracterized him, go watch the full unedited Vice interview. Go in there in good faith and take off your JP is my daddy goggles before you do. The unedited one makes him look way worse. Vice did him a favor. At least he kind of looks like he can hold some semblance of consistent thought in the edited version. Instead of slipping around in his verbal diarrhea not really saying anything and then backtracking on the things he does say. Isn't that one of your rules, Jordan? To be precise in your speech? What do you mean by attractive exactly? So then what is a better outcome for you then? A workplace with no sexual harassment, where women wear uniforms and don't wear makeup, much like the Maoists, like you were saying, or a sort of freer workplace in which sexual harassment is an inevitability because women wear high heels and makeup. Well, I don't say that sexual harassment is an in inevitability because women wear high heels and makeup. I didn't say that. Or that it is more likely. I said that it, it contributes to the sexualization of the workplace. What's the difference between more likely and that? Okay, more likely, I'll go with that. Yeah, more likely, right? Sure. He was trying real hard to find a way to squirm out of that, because he rarely actually wants to say anything precise, or people might actually hold him to his statements. Chapter 4. Them hoes ain't loyal. JP often criticizes those that have a self-imposed victim mentality, for those who constantly push the idea that they are oppressed, or that their position in life is out of their control. Be an honest person and work and get to the top of whatever it is that you want to get to the top of. Stand up for yourself like a respectable human being and be a bit of a light on the world instead of a blight. And honestly, on an individual level, this is a somewhat useful thing to argue. Clean your room, work hard, contribute to society, yada yada yada. He also often praises the idea of hierarchies of competence and derides any idea of equality of outcome. Hierarchies are, of competence are desirable and they should be promoted. So none of this idiot egalitarian equity. It's not good for anyone. First of all, it's impossible. Second, it would be murderous to impose. But third, even if it succeeded, it would fail. As fast as it succeeded, that would be how fast it would fail. I think the really deadly leftist presumption is equality of outcome. I think as soon as you start talking about equality of outcome, you should be put in a box and put off the shelf. Now, I was going to spend time actually arguing as to why this was hypocritical for Peterson to suggest, especially considering that he has said that a culture of enforced monogamy would be a good thing. But actually, I don't need to because Joe Rogan did it brilliantly. Well, the only the, I was making a minor point. The minor point was that one of the ways that societies around the world have figured out that you keep young male aggression under control is by enforcing monogamous standards because it gives everyone a chance in some sense. So that's the it only gives point that I was chance, making. Meaning it, it clears more, uh, more women will be available for one-on-one -on -one relationships. Yes. Yeah, well, you see this happening in, in universities where women outnumber men. So the men hypothetically have more sexual opportunity. But that isn't what happens. What happens is that a small minority of men have all the sexual opportunity. A fairly large minority of men don't. But isn't this in some ways against your whole idea of equality of outcome because you're, you're talking about equality of sexual outcome now there's going to be people that are better at finding mates and that this is what they enjoy they enjoy having many mates yep, they enjoy term. being if this is what they enjoy if it's a man who doesn't want a family and enjoys dating multiple women, why is that bad? Well, the, I think the fundamental reason it's bad is because it's bad in the long run for children. It's bad for children yeah. if he chooses to have children. Like I already said that, you know, the proclivity of a hierarchy is that all the spoils go to the person at the top. Right. And that can destabilize the whole structure. Yes. So we have to have a dialogue about how to rectify that. But how and could you possibly rectify that if one man is, but like say if we've got one six foot five beautiful man who's got a perfect body and he's yep. brilliant and he just wants to date a bunch of women. Yep. And all the rest of the people are five foot one and they're fat and they're lazy and like this guy's going to, if this is the competition, he's going to win. Yep. Yep. There's well, no way around this. And yep. even well, if you happened, decide to have enforced monogamy, where it becomes a popular thing, the women are going to be more drawn to him if he chooses to date them. They might decide, I would rather have him sometimes than never that at is, all. That is, but what is wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with it is that it destabilizes society and it's bad for children. Right, you said that. Yeah, but, that's but what if they don't want to have children? Well, there's a lot of people that don't want to have children. There's a lot of people that choose to go their entire life without having children. There's men in their 30s. I'm one of, some of my friends have vasectomies. They don't want children. Why would that help? in any way, these involuntary celibates. Well, I think you tilt the society so that it serves the interests of, well, that's a good question. Hold on now. What were you going to say there, mate? Serve the interests of, of what? Of who? Well, I think you tilt the society so that it serves the interests of, serve those who need it, serve those who may have less. All right, calm down there, comrade Peterson. But you no, almost I have Look, a, I see your point. There's no doubt about it. You're almost forcing I, inequality of outcome. I know. That, one, that was her point too. Mm -hmm. To the degree that she had a point, that was her point. Now, the problem with Peterson, aside from all the irreconcilable, hypocritical, inconsistent bullshit, is that he never clearly defines his terms, like equality of outcome. What specifically is he referring to when he says that? Now, if you're a fan of Peterson and you hear him saying stuff like egalitarianism, equality of outcome is bad, anyone who suggests it needs to be put in a box and put away, then in that you're including people who might suggest that in certain aspects of life, a baseline equality of outcome is something we should strive for. You know, access to decent healthcare, education, housing, you get it. 
But no, if you were to suggest any of that, you should be put in a box and put away. If you're poor, it's on you. Pull your pants up, work hard, and you can lift yourself. Oh, but if you can't get laid, well then now we need enforced monogamy. Because all these goddamn chads keep taking all my bitches. Now I generally don't like throwing this word around or calling people this, but Jesus Christ, JP has just given the perfect ammunition and justifications for incels to feel legitimized in their grievances. Yes, yeah, spouting off stuff like that really feeds into the incel delusion. And there's a hilarious and even more egregious example of him doing this. Remember those 50s hat sporting fathers who stayed married, supported their families and repressed women? Well, they're headed for extinction. Now, you may think this is laced with some underlying irony. I mean, he's even got the fedora on. No, this is completely unironic. Un at this point, Wente should know that it's the testosterone-laden man who is most attractive when women are fertile. When it comes to the serious business of sex, women will choose a testosterone-charged world wrecker most of the time. Okay, this entire video is pretty hilarious. He basically complains for five minutes that men aren't allowed to be men, that women fuck around too much, and that nice guys finish last. Just what kind of man is emerging to replace the chauvinists of yesterday? Type 1, let's call him, very popular in Japan, is shiftless, dependent, and low in status. He poses no threat to women, however, displaying little interest in them altogether, except when animated, infantilized, and available for kissing practice on a portable Nintendo. Damn, Jordan, go a bit easier on the weebs and the gamers, huh? Type 2 man is the archetypal bad boy, impulsive and exploitative, but willing to bed anyone he doesn't have to take responsibility for. He's the perfect mate for the modern single mother, if she wants a different father for every child. Type 2 man makes 50s dad positively look Christ-like. Those goddamn type 2 chads. Increasingly among my students, I see young men who don't know how to be good men. My son wasn't allowed to throw a snowball, for example, in elementary school. It is in that manner that decent boys are made to feel guilty about their masculine impulses. Man, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. His son had to follow a school's safety regulations. Oh no. And that's why people don't know how to be good men, because they can't throw snowballs. So they withdraw. The more aggressive, psychopathic boys, they simply don't care. So they'll be the ones fathering your grandchildren in the future. If tomorrow's woman can find a man to sleep with at all, that'll keep the testosterone flowing. Damn, look at him, he's like actually really mad about this. Okay, at this point, can we just accept he's a cringy charlatan, please? I'm actually genuinely having secondhand embarrassment. Intellectual, my ass, you don't see Noam Chomsky doing anything like this. Okay, so I just want to speak a little candidly at the end here. If you're a JP fan and you made it this far, I'm really glad. And if you disagree with something I say in good faith, then please let me know. Uh, this may have come across as a bit of a hit piece, and that's because it kind of is. Uh, just because such a big contingent of people online seem to view Peterson as like this great intellectual, a lot of what he says is just kind of cringy, hypocritical, inconsistent, sometimes even straight up misinformation. Now to make it clear, I don't think of him as negatively as a lot of other people do. You know, I think his self-help stuff is pretty good. Like I personally don't connect with it, but if it helps a lot of people and it gets them off their ass and doing stuff for society, then I'm all for that. Uh, for the most part, his psych stuff seems decent, although he is a Jungian, so you know, there's that. But is he really like some great modern intellectual that has something important to say in a wide variety of fields? No, not really. So my mother is a doctor, and I mean a real doctor, not just a psych PhD holder. And she's a fairly intelligent person, but just because she's smart, I don't consider her opinions on economics or social or pol political issues, because I know she's not very well versed in those topics. Ultimately, I think it's good to know that Peterson is an ideologue. Despite how he may come across, I know he can come across as professorial and uh, logical and rational. I think there is something about the way he carries himself. There, uh, Sometimes he does this thing, for example, where his, he like furrows his brows and he goes super serious when he's saying something. And it, it all looks very cool. He's like, oh yes, let me use my logic powers here. But fundamentally, his worldview seems to be built on ideology, feelings, stories, and religious dogma. So inevitably, there are these moments where these inconsistencies start to show, and cracks in his logic appear around him, and it all kind of crumbles apart. If you're a big fan of him, again, just keep in mind that uh, you don't have to keep this perfect, idealized vision of him intact in your mind. You don't owe him anything. You can take away all positive things that he offers, and leave it at that. I think he will say whatever is convenient to push more people towards his idealized worldview. And that's all there is to it. I mean, for God's sake, he contributed to Prager U, you know, an organization that deliberately dresses itself as some sort of faux university and basically dribbles out some bullshit propaganda. And it's filled with misinformation and lies. It's actually insulting how blatant it is as well. Like, it's like they don't respect the uh, intelligence of their viewers. The fact that he felt uh, comfortable contributing to such an organization just because their worldview kind of aligns with their kind of aligns with his that says a lot to me okay i think that's basically all i have to say uh 
I upload a video every two to four weeks. I talk about stuff relating to social media, internet personalities, gaming, uh, dumb drama, sometimes a little bit of uh, political and social stuff in there as well. Check out my other stuff, and I'll see you next time. Smash all the buttons, yada, 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 YouTuber stuff. See ya.